Brian Hodgson, if you want to be formal, Dr. Brian Hodgson, worked in uh, uh, RCA Moorestown mm -hmm. for in the, in the same building for about 20 years. Great. Um, what was the first position you had with RCA? Uh, the first position was as a unit manager. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, doctor, Dr. Bill Patton, brought me into the company. The uh, original title was going to be Airborne and Electronic, Electronic Warfare Antenna. But by the time I actually reached my desk, that job had gone away. And uh, so I just, uh, I just went into an R&D uh, function with the, with the company. And what was that like? Did you, what was it like being a brand new employee at RCA? Oh yes, brand new, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Uh, was it was it the biggest, people? biggest company I'd ever worked for. Mm -hmm. So it was a little daunting initially, but uh, I, got, I got on fine with the rest of the people in the, in the building. So uh, no problem, really. Did you have a mentor? Somebody who led you through as a young... Uh, Mo here? Breeze. Uh, Mo Breeze was uh, the, the manager I reported to. And so uh, he, was, he, was, uh, he, was, he was very good. Very, I found him very, very workable with. Very workable with. What kind of things did he do to sort of help you become a good... to inspire you or make you a better worker? Uh, I think the, deal, the, the, the cooperation I got from him uh, in uh, sorting out uh, any, any problems I had and... Uh, uh, basically, it was very, uh, very approachable, so it, which, which made it easier. Okay. Mm -hmm. Approachability. Mm. Um, Speak up just a little okay, more. Okay, sure, no problem. Um, how were your coworkers? Uh, well, of course, they were all engineers, so they're all fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 an engineer is an engineer, and usually they're very, very, very much, uh, very similar in uh, in the way you can approach them and uh, the the. Uh, the assistance that you can get from them, they usually give you any assistance they can, so I, I got on quite well with them. Yes. So you feel like you worked like a team then? Uh, certainly, certainly it yeah. was, yes. Mm -hmm. um, what was the most significant project you worked on? Uh, well, of course, uh, after, after about, uh, about five years in that R&D function, they moved me into the program management office, uh, which was, uh, you know, was Aegis, Aegis based. And so uh, I was working on the uh, working on the arrays, the Aegis arrays for for about the last twelve years of my time there. Can you tell us about Aegis? Uh, well, as you, as you know, it's uh, it's an antenna. Uh, they they put uh, four of them on a ship so that it can see three hundred and sixty three three hundred and sixty degrees around, and uh, they they weigh about six tons and uh, they they take about a, a year to build and uh, uh, the navy the navy seems to love them. Okay. <laughs> And what was your role in, in helping uh, build them or develop them? Uh, I was a, a hardware between hardware and hardware and paperwork. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, involved in uh, uh, trying to overcome any snags that arose during the manufacture, and uh, there was a, a significant amount of paperwork went into each array. And uh, basically, I mean, it generated a three-inch thick file for each antenna, and uh, so I was involved in uh, keeping that all straight. Okay. What was the biggest snag you ever encountered in? In doing all this time, time, time. Yes, to get done Try, yes, that's right. Yes, try to get pull all the ends together. Yes. <laughs> um, how did your so you you after about five years you got started on Aegis and how did your career progress from there? Uh, well, I, did you work on I, I, when I when I came out of my unit, see, when uh, in 1988 GE took over, yeah. and uh, their philosophy was that every unit manager had to have about ten or twelve people working for them for him. Well, I only had three people working for him, so my unit manager position went out the window, mm -hmm. and I became became a senior engineer just uh, for in the in the program organization. And um, how did that how did that change your did that change your job a lot? No, no, no not really. No, no. Did you find it diff How different was it working under GE for you? Uh, I I don't know. They weren't they weren't there for long enough. Uh, yeah. It, it, uh, here, a, a small anecdote. With our, with RCA, you know, they had an RCA store in the building, okay, mm -hmm. where they used to sell television and all that sort of stuff. Well, quite frequently at 11 o'clock in the morning, you will see factory people watching base baseball games in the, in the, in the RCA store, okay. Wow. Well, RC, GE came in and that stopped dead. That didn't, that didn't go on anymore. So you can see GE were co uh, concerned about uh, tightening up the ship quite a bit, okay. Different culture. They're just oh, quite very different, yes, yes. But you don't feel like the, in your day-to-day -day work, the different culture changed things too much? No, 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 not at all. And did you continue on with L3 then, or did you retire before then? 
Uh, sorry, did I continue on with? After after GE left and L3 came in. Why well, don't forget? Then it became Martin Marietta. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> okay, and then finally it became Lockheed, <laughs> and uh, and I retired in 02. In 02. Mm -hmm. um, what was the best thing working for RCA? Uh, I th I think the 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 overall experience. Uh, I, I can't point to any one particular item, but uh, I enjoyed my time. With uh, in in that building, okay, mm -hmm. whichever whichever name was on the front, I enjoyed my time there, mm -hmm. and uh, so I was I never never thought that when I joined them in '82 that I would wind up retiring 20 years later. I never never thought that the job would last that long, mm -hmm. but uh, they just they maybe just keep on buying ships, and I said, hey, you buy the ships and we'll stick antennas on them, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, what was the worst thing about working at RCA? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That, I don't know that there was one. I don't. No, nothing sticks in my mind as uh, being a, a particular nuisance. No, I, I don't recall there being one. Yeah, great. Um, you, how did you handle with the changes of technology that happened in the 20, 30 years that you were working for GE? Uh, did they help uh, train you? Is there things that were changing? Yeah, there were. I mean. Uh, one of the one of the biggest changes uh, that occurred on the on the arrays was uh, a change in the in the style of coaxial cable that they that they started to use, and uh, that that required an immense amount of mechanical effort. Okay, but uh, one of one of my parts of it was presenting what was happening inside the factory to all the navy brass and all the all the uh, the incoming RCA and uh, GE people. And uh, so giving presentations was one of my great pleasures mm -hmm. as to, uh, uh, when I was there. I always, I always used to enjoy that. Okay. So you get to explain what you're, what's going on to everyone else? Well, you see, I always used to introduce hardware or graphics or, uh, or moving items, and I, I could hold the audience quite well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I got the compliment once when one of the people came up and said, well, I wish you'd been my professor at college. <laughs> Did you have good jokes? Uh, no, not not so much jokes uh, as uh, as uh, as graphics. Good graphics. Yes, good graphics. Yes. Interesting. Mm. Um. So, um, did you do? Did you have a social life with your coworkers? Uh, not not so much. I I have followed up with them since then, mm -hmm. but uh, no, I had a family of uh, three sons. Mm -hmm. The three sons are all very active in swimming, yeah. and so any any social life basically uh, resolved around water. Okay. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Pool to pool. Pool, pool, pool. Where, where did you live while you were working? We, we lived in Voorhees. In Voorhees? Voorhees, yes. What, yeah. what was Voorhees like when you first moved there? So, uh, well, was it really um, different? Obviously, it was uh, the tremendous amount of construction gone on there since, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we moved into a small subdivision, Acorn Hill, and uh, it, it was good. It was convenient for, for Moorestown. I could get to Moorestown relatively easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and were there other RCA employees near you? Not that I not that I know of. Yeah. No, and not so, that I know of. Like no. your kids' school, kids' school, your classmate, his their classmates weren't necessarily parent. Their parents weren't RCA employees necessarily. No, not very many of them. No. Mm -hmm. Cherry Hill was the big center for a lot of that, I think. That's right. All more my guys went to Eastern. They all went to Eastern. Yes. Yeah. So, um, what did your kids think about your career at RCA? Did they know what you did, or did you talk about it with them? Uh, oh, they they knew what they knew what I did, uh, but it's not it's not easy uh, discussing some of the aspects of the job to them. Uh, uh, it was um, uh, uh, it was not 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 easy stuff to describe. Uh, they did go to uh, one or two of the open houses, mm -hmm. and uh, and they saw where I worked, and I think they were suitably impressed. Good. Mm -hmm. And did you? Could you share information about Aegis with them, or is that all classified? Uh, oh, some of the general stuff you could, but yeah. uh, classified stuff, I, I still don't say anything about it. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine yeah. for boys that would be an interesting topic. <laughs> well, they, they, they knew Dad had a secret clearance, but I mean, beyond that, they didn't, uh, they didn't know. <laughs> um, so, um, there's this term called the RCA family. What does that mean to you? Uh, it, it, it means uh, that uh, RCA was, was a very family-oriented uh, company when, when, I, when I joined them, okay, which, uh, which as I said, GE put an end to a lot of that when they came in. Mm -hmm. uh, so that with the open days and, the, and, and this sort of thing, um, it, it was family-oriented. was family -oriented. Uh, the, uh, the, the fact that uh, they, the company would bother 
to, to bring families in, like, 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 like every other year, I think it was, uh, meant that uh, there, were, there was an interest in the company in, uh, in keeping things running smoothly. Okay. Um, so how would you sum up your time at RCA? Uh, the, 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 uh, just the 20 years. Uh, I, I enjoyed it very much. I had, a, I had a good career there. I enjoyed it. The work was always very innovative, okay. Uh, you, could, uh, you could introduce new ideas uh, where, where you thought they were worthwhile. And uh, I got on, I see I interacted a lot with a lot of Navy personnel because uh, I, we were selling something to the Navy, so I interacted with them. I got on fine with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as you may guess, sometimes the accent works, so it works, works, uh, works wonders. <laughs> Now, how was it working with the government? So you worked with the Navy a lot. Was it? Was it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, just the just was the that people. Part that, of the snags. Uh, no, no, very, very seldom. Uh, occasionally, I had to chase after them to get a final uh, final uh, signature or something of that sort. But uh, no, I got I got on fine with them. Okay. Great. Mm. Well, um, anything else you want to share about your experience at RCA? Uh, I, mean, I, I don't know. I could tell you some of the stuff that we, some of the stuff that we built. Okay, yeah. uh, it's, uh, in that in that initial R and D period before GE came in, it was all very much uh, a lot of R and D money lying around, mm -hmm. and so we were involved in uh, in developing different types of antenna radiating elements, different types of different frequency band uh, radiating elements, uh, and all this sort of stuff. And uh, one, one of the things that was very interesting was a, was a very lightweight antenna. We built a very lightweight antenna built out of carbon fiber, mm. built out of carbon fiber and, and, and metal foil. And uh, although this thing was about eight feet long, about the size of that cabinet back there, uh, you could eat quite easily lift it up and carry it around. And uh, I think the, the, the ultimate intention was some sort of put this in the, in the belly of a, of a drone or, or some sort of light airplane uh, for, uh, for looking down on the ground. Uh, though I never did hear how far it went, I never did hear what if it's ever used. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, thank you so much for your time. Very, very good. Nice, nice talking. Thank okay. you. I'm very happy to be here. This is this is just like being home in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I can I can see some of the pieces I brought in here. I can still recognise them. When I, I have a, I have another nipper. He's halfway halfway between that one and this one. He stands about this high. So he's got to come down here sometime. Okay. Did you get it at the RCA store? Uh, <laughs> I, f I forget where it came from, but uh, okay. what I what I used to do when anybody retired or, or left, I used to go through their desk after they left and pull out all the RCA stuff. And <laughs> so, uh, which is why I've got bookcases full of stuff and boxes full of stuff and nippers and uh, radios and you name it, all all sorts of stuff. I had a lot of things to keep. It's, yes, because uh, when we came over to the United States in '67. Yeah, you couldn't really visualize where you were going to be f like 40 years later. But uh, basically, we were very fortunate. We were very fortunate, okay. All we had to do was to learn to drive on the wrong side of the road and, and use their funny money. And, uh, but basically, it was a, a very good move. Very good Thank move. you so much for your, your conversation with us my, today. My pleasure. Thank you.